Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I easily create an accurate line sketch for my art using the grid method. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will be showing you how I get the grid on my reference image to use and how I use this reference as a guide to help me draw my line sketch faster and easier. For my soft pastel work, I typically draw the sketch on printer weight paper and later transfer it to my pastel paper. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring you into my editing software. I use Affinity, but most editing software has the same feature and it's usually located in the same place under the view menu. I start by opening up my reference photo in my program, formatted to the size that I want my finished painting to be. In this case, it's five by seven inches. Then I go up into the view menu and I select show grid. And just like that, the grid lays right over my reference image. I believe it will usually default to one inch increments if your document is open in inches like mine is. Um, I have mine where my one inch lines are bolder and my half inch lines are lighter. You can make adjustments to your grid under the same view menu by selecting Grid and Axis Manager. And this opens up a little box for you to make your changes to. So you can go ahead and play around with your menus in there to see what you can do. Additionally, I always leave my rulers on as well as it just makes it so much easier. If your ruler isn't shown by default, the command to turn it on is also under the view menu. It simply says show ruler. And I actually note these inch marks along the sides and bottom of my paper to make finding my place so much easier. You can even use the free MS Paint app that comes installed on most PCs, although the grid options are not quite as customizable. But you just open your image in paint, and zoom it back because it always opens too big. And then you go under the file menu to um, see your image properties just to make sure your document is open in inches. And then once again, you just go right up to your view menu, turn on your grid lines, view menu, turn on your rulers, and you're good to go. For some reason, paint seems to do half inch grid lines, and I actually don't know how to adjust it. But I'm sure there's a lot of other free programs out there that you can use. And if you don't have any editing software or simply prefer to work from a printed image, you can either draw your grid lines right on your printed image, or you can draw or print them on a piece of acetate and lay it over your reference photo. If you don't have grid paper, you can simply use a ruler and draw on your grid lines. And I've also made my own printable grid paper. And once I figure out how to actually add the links, I will add them to the description down below for you to download it. So I've put the gridded reference image in the bottom left corner so you can follow along, but I did speed this part up because it took me about 40 minutes to draw in real time. But I kept it slow enough for you to still clearly see what I'm doing. I also left in all my mistakes and erasures so you can see the full process. Plus, I wanted you to see why I don't do the drawing directly on my pastel paper. All that erasing could damage the tooth of the pastel paper. But I will plan on another video real soon showing you how I transfer my line drawing to the pastel paper. If I wasn't filming, I'd rotate my paper around more as I'm drawing and it would help me achieve the angles and curves and things. But this just made me go a little bit slower and maybe have to make a few more corrections. That being said, I wanted to show you how I'm targeting spots on the image and using the grid to help me determine proper proportions, angles, curves, etc. You can actually get a lot more in depth with this technique than I'm even showing you here. But most often, I honestly just freehand flowers without the grid or maybe just do a simple cross section. But until you get comfortable drawing without guides, this is a wonderful tool that helps you learn to see accurately and get a decent sketch to start with. The more you do it, the more your drawing skills will also improve. This is my go-to method for animals and people, especially my portraits, because those do need to be very accurate. This technique actually helps teach your eyes to see what's actually there instead of what your brain thinks it sees. 
But to help with really understanding what I'm doing here, I'm going to enlarge the reference photo a little bit. This should help you see exactly what I'm looking at. So I use the grid to determine where I am in the drawing. And then I look at the boxes and use that as a guide for where my marks need to be and what angle or curve I need, etc. When accuracy and proportion are even more important, I may even work on one box at a time. The key is to pay attention to where the lines land on your grid and do your best to replicate this on your paper. But just like anything else, this technique still requires practice. So start with simpler designs and then build up to more detailed images and be patient with yourself. However, something like this flower is really a great reference to start with because flowers don't have to be exact. If you add an extra petal or you get a curve wrong or you know anything like that, it's still going to look like the flower you want it to look like. Nobody's going to know unless they compare it side by side with the original reference photo. If you try this technique and it helps you, please let me know in the comments down below. And on the flip side, if you're still struggling, please also let me know. I can always create a few more tips and tricks videos to make the drawing process easier. Truth is I've actually really been wanting to create an in-depth course on drawing realistically at some point. But in the meantime, I can do a few more, you know, short tips and tricks. And if any of you want to learn more about how I edit and enhance my reference images to get the best results in my art, um, leave me a comment down below and I'll create a few more videos on that. And if you have any questions about today's technique or if there's something else you want to see in the future, um, leave me a comment down below. If you found this video helpful, it would really mean a lot to me if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And of course, don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. And please share this with your friends. I am working on lots more short tips like this and longer in-depth tutorials to come. I've got a bunch of soft pastel uh, tutorials and how-tos coming. And we're almost done here. Um, although I did accidentally miss the last few seconds, but there is a still photo at the end. And once again, I thank you so much for watching. I hope you plan on tuning in again. And until next time, enjoy creating. Bye.